alpacas humming harmoniously in the misty mountains surrounding Oregon's Willamette Valley. <laughs> Hey everyone, it's Natalie, also known as Nitty Natty. Welcome to my yarn room. Today we're taking a tour through my yarn stash. I'm going to share what's still in my collection after stashing down for nearly a year, the future plans I have for some of this yarn, and the stories behind the more special skeins. It's going to be such a fun video. So grab your yarn and a cup of your favorite drink and let's go stash diving together. Hey everyone, my name is Natalie, also known as Nitty Natty. I am a knit and crochet designer and YouTube podcaster coming at you from Dallas, Texas. And recently I did a video of my minimal yarn room. I completely changed this room that acts as my like yarn room, studio, slash home office slash just like a bonus room of our house and I completely changed it around and you guys love those tour videos but you were like that's all great Natalie but we want to see your stash like we just want you to pull out all the yarn and show us what you have and tell us what you're going to do with it and all of that so I am going to do that today. I get lots of video ideas from your suggestions, so if you ever have an idea or a request, you can feel free to let me know. You can comment on this video. You can send me a direct message on YouTube, on YouTube, on Instagram, or you can send me an email, nittynatty at gmail.com. I do keep track of your suggestions. So yeah, let's get started. What we're gonna do is pull down everything here behind me. I'm gonna move to the couch so that I can have it like yarn all around me, my dream, and we're gonna go through all of it. I've been dreaming all night, bringing me some inspiration. Never meant to love no one, but baby. I saw you for a second and I'm happy that you came my way. Don't wanna waste no time without you ever brightening up my days. Never meant to fall so hard. Oh, I don't wanna die. No, I bet you're not beside me. Love of mine. Now, I thought it would be really fun for you to guess how many skeins of yarn you think that I have in my stash. So, before you go any further in the video, make a guess in your head or even leave it down in the comments and let's see how close you are. All right, who is ready to play with some yarn? First, I want to talk to you just about the word stash. So stash has been used, I don't know when I first heard the term, to describe basically like your collection of yarn. And people have lots of feelings about stash and how much you should have, how much they personally should have, and honestly it's all relative. Whatever is a comfortable amount of yarn for you and a sustainable amount of yarn for your budget is what your stash should be and honestly it can change and evolve over time. I used to have a lot more yarn here behind me um, and I've been knitting for ooh like 15 years and so in 15 years like I've changed a lot as a person and my tastes have changed and my taste in yarn has changed so um, over the course of the last like year or so I've been paring down my stash by knitting or crocheting some of the yarn or simply donating or giving the yarn to other people that I knew I wasn't going to use. Um, so to, to me, I feel like this is a relatively small stash. To you, it may seem absolutely huge, but either way, whatever your stash situation looks like, as long as it makes you happy and doesn't make you feel overwhelmed, that's the right amount of stash. Now for me, my long-term vision is that I will have less than this, but I think I always wanna keep a little bit of a stash. I feel like it's good to have at least a few skeins of sock yarn. I am a sock knitter, just in case I need a project to cast on. But I would like to get to the point where I don't have any more garment yarn because I have a lot of gray and I love gray, but I would like to sometimes make a pink sweater 
I like to make lots of pink things. Um, and right now I feel like I need to use this yarn up. That's just my rule for myself. I don't feel like everyone needs to do that. I just would like to use this before I buy more yarn. No promises though. So anyway, that's my stash theory. I would love to hear yours or how much yarn you have in your stash and well, how you consume yarn and how you buy yarn. I think it's all really fascinating and I feel like there's no wrong answer. So without further ado, let's pull this yarn out and let's see what we got in there. All right, we are here on the couch. I am surrounded by yarn, literally. So I thought it would just be fun to start picking stuff up and going through it. You are gonna see an abundance of yarns from Tennessee and Texas since those are the places that I have lived in the past 10 years. I am curious to know what the oldest skein of yarn is here in my stash. There are some skeins that tell some stories, so I will be showing you that. Um, but don't worry, I'm not gonna like sit and talk for at length about every single one. We'll keep it interesting and quick paced. And after I show you these, I will, so I had a request to show my like scrappy, like treasure box of yarn, so that's coming too. All right, let's get to some stash. Okay, I thought I'd start with my garment yarn, which is yarn I bought, intending to make garments. Now, none of them are garments right now. I mean, I have made some, but yep, they're skeins of yarn. So the first thing I have is this gray yarn. It is Miss Babs Yowza. Let's see, the colorway is called Slate. I love these skeins. I did have the intention of making some sweater I don't even remember, um, but I think what I'm going to make maybe down the line is uh oh my gosh i just forgot what it was called it's a hohe pattern it's really cabled although with only three skeins i'm not sure if i have enough these are huge though they're 560 yards but it's a cabled long sleeve jacket so i don't know but anyway one day this will become a nice beautiful sweater and i love this color i love gray Continuing on the Miss Babs, which is a dyer in Tennessee, Miss Babs train, I have six skeins of Miss Babs Kunlin, and, or Kunlin, I don't know how to say it, Kunlin. It is a DK weight yarn. I definitely had intentions to make a specific cardigan, but of course now I can't remember. Although I wanna say it was called Greystone. Who knows, either way, one day I will make a DK weight or maybe even sport weight sweater out of this yarn and it's going to be beautiful. Oh, and the colorway is called Oyster. I just love how like pearly and shiny this gray is. So I guess we'll finish up the Miss Babs yarn. I love Miss Babs yarn so much because these are fingering weight skeins. One single skein is how many yards? 1,700. 50. So 1750, 1750 yards, which for my size, I can make a decent sweater. I can make a boxy, I can make a cardigan. And I know for a lot of people, even if you can't make a long sleeve top, you can make a short sleeve top with this amount of yardage, which makes it a really, really good value. So whenever I see a color that I like, I just grab it because basically it's a sweater and a ball. This is Miss Bob's Katahdin. It is a 100% superwash BFL yarn. I like the BFL yarn because it doesn't have the nylon and so it doesn't have that stretch for garments. I have made two or three sweaters, I think, out of this um, yarn, not in these colors. This color is lead and going along with my gray theme and this color man this must have been like natalie on a whim kind of a purchase this is edge of night and it is a wild iris which means it's not repeatable but that one is pretty fun right so i don't know can you see me making a garment out of this i don't i don't really know maybe like a, a tea or something i don't really um like the look of a garment oh sorry guys <laughs> the look of a garment that has variegated stripes throughout so i don't know i think i went a little crazy on this one but maybe i can helical knit something in the future and that will get rid of that who knows who knows next we have some knit picks stroll fingering yarn this colorway is called 
Jackrabbit Heather. I love this yarn. I do think I'm gonna knit a sweater this fall, stay tuned, out of this yarn. I actually have eight skeins of it, but one of them fell and I am plugged into the mic, so I'm not going to get it right now. Um, I remember I was going to make like a meshy cardigan, crochet cardigan, but you know what? It sat long enough and now I wanna make something different and that's 100% okay. So stay tuned for this one. Okay, Texas yarns. Now we have some Suburban Stitcher. This colorway is Cinder. I actually think that I've got six, at least six skeins of this yarn. I did try to make a sweater a um, couple years ago and ended up pulling it out. So now I have six skeins of this ready to make something fabulous. I don't know what yet, but it is ready and I still adore this colorway. Okay, now lastly for what I'm considering garment yarn is this Mercerized Cotton Fingering Weight. Um, a friend actually got this for me when she was in Greece and I don't know much about the yarn except that I can like just tell by looking at it that it's fingering weight. I've tried to make lots of things out of this. I know that it has to be something that doesn't take a lot of yarn because it I don't know how much is on there. I've tried, I guess you can see here, I was trying something crocheted. I don't even remember when I did that, but it was in the bag, so that's pretty funny. I've tried knitting with it. I just don't know what to do with this and yeah, I don't know. So if you have any ideas for fingering weight, fingering weight mercerized cotton i don't want to make like an accessory or a doily i want to make something i'm going to use so give me your ideas i need them <laughs> All right, let's get into my favorite stuff, which is all these brightly colored fingering weight yarns here. Behind me, I have so many different fingering weights um, in various uh, plies and fiber contents. That's what I was trying to think of. So let's do single ply here first. Here is another Texas dyer. This is Chasing Rabbits Fiberco. These actually came in a goodie bag, a fabulous goodie bag from the Hill Country Weavers Retreat. And I used up the other one that I got. And so now I just have these. They're just, you know, waiting for the right project. Here is a little bit Malabrigo Machita in the colorway Arco Iris. It's a really crazy fun color. I would never pick this out for myself, but somebody gave it to me as a gift, my brother-in-law actually, which makes it really special when somebody who doesn't knit picks something out for you. So I definitely want to do something with it. I've tried before pairing it with that, maybe, or mm, I don't know, but I have used the other colors that he got me. So now I just have this one, but one day I'll find the perfect project for it too. This yarn is extra, extra special because it is from Hooker's Corner and Kathy, who is the dyer behind Hooker's Corner, um, she was affected in the wildfires in California. I guess this was like two years ago now. Was it um, in paradise? I can't remember all the details now, but it wiped out the entire town. It was just a horrible, horrible tragedy. So I got these before that happened. She um, somehow, even from Oregon, hooked up with Bliss Yarns in Brentwood, Tennessee, which is where I am from. And I got these two beautiful bright colors. Um, the This one is called Hooker's Corner, which is so fun. And this one is called Daffodil. They are tied together because I intend to use them together. At least I did when I bought them. Um, and I think I was gonna make a brioche shawl. So that's still potentially on the docket, though I could separate these if needed. But I do like to tie yarns together. This is just with like some ribbon that I have. Um, that I knew I wouldn't be using. So tie your skeins together if you intend to use them together. You can still like store them in my like my shelves where they look separate, but they're still tied together. It always helps trigger my memory. All right, now I'm just gonna start picking things up and talking about them quickly or slowly, depending on what they are. This is Jim's Fiber, another Texas dyer. And I'm, I'm sorry, not another Texas dyer. Um, where is Jim's? Mississippi. And I got this at Bliss Yarns and this colorway is Pure Bliss. Bliss Yarns, their colors are this aqua and then brown. So I like having colors that are special after yarn stores. This is, I remember buying this from Leading Men Fiber Arts. It is the Upside Down, which is um, 
what is that show? See, I ordered it when I was a huge fan of the show and now I've forgotten what it's even called. Stranger Things, Stranger Things. It's a really fun colorway. I want to say that this was gifted to me or maybe I got it on a yarn crawl. This is Monostel Uruguay Allegria and the colorway is Atlantico. Okay, this dyer is no longer dying. Um, she is in Oregon. I got this at the yarn shop Cozy. If you live near Eugene, Oregon, you should go to Cozy. It's a great shop. Um, and this is called Oregon Coast Sunset and it's so gorgeous. And especially since she's not dying anymore, this is a coveted skein. I love this color. This is Big Sky Yarn Company. She gave me this skein when we did a collaboration. I designed a shawl with her yarn and she sent me this as a thank you. This is Music Row for Nashville, Tennessee. Even though she is in Montana, she did live in Tennessee, I think, for a little while. And so she has a relationship with Bliss Yarns and I adore this color. Texas Yarn, this is Suburban Stitcher Birthday Live. I got some of this when she did this, I think this was from several years ago, and then my friend Rebecca let me take this from her stash when we were organizing it, and I really, really like this color. Another Texas Dyer Yarn Carnival. This colorway is for the Modern Skein, which is a shop in Montgomery, Texas. Like I said, I really like getting skeins in colors that are special or specific to the shop so that I can have a memory from those trips. How crazy and cool and fun is this one? I remember buying this, I think this is a Texas dyer, three Irish girls, I'm not sure, but I did get it on, um, on a yarn crawl. My husband can't surprise me by taking me on a yarn crawl of like 15 yarn shops in Texas. It was super, super cool. I didn't even know it was such a thing and I had to get something everywhere I went. So this is called um, everlasting gobstopper. Here's a fun one. I actually dyed this one myself. The story is that um, my friend Rebecca, we went to her house, several of us, and we learned to dye with Kool-Aid. I think we had Kool-Aid and maybe there was some vinegar involved. I don't really remember. Basically, we just got to do the fun part and Rebecca took care of all of the bits that made sure the dye stuck. And this is just a sock blank. And so I've got a million crazy colors on here. Who knows what this is gonna look like when I actually knit it up. Um, and I guess I named it Plum Party. But look, I am the artist and the dyer. <laughs> this one is really pretty. This is from Yarn Rehab. I remember buying this again on a yarn crawl, but I don't know much more about it. This is Rock Shelter Sock in Decadence. Here is another special yarn store colorway. This is from Spartacus Dyes. I don't know if they're still dying anymore. And this colorway is Bliss for Bliss Yarns. More Suburban Stitcher yarn. I love Suburban Stitcher. When she dyed this colorway this year, it's called Quinceanera. It was supposed to be, or it was for DFW Fiberfest this year. But of course, since it was in April, it was canceled and we could not meet. But this was her special show colorway and I love it. This yarn was a gift from my husband, Kent. When he was on a trip, he got it for me. I don't remember where he was, although I want to say, oh, hand dyed in South Carolina. This is Lydia Yarn Company. I think it's two separate skeins. I have no idea what I'm gonna do with this, but when somebody gives me yarn, I feel the need to knit it and appreciate that they bought me the yarn and love it. And I think that's pretty cool. Kent always looks for things that are special at the shop um, that I couldn't get like here in Texas. So I really appreciate that. Another Hooker's Corner skein. This one's called Check Yourself. I think it's for breast cancer awareness, but I love pink so much, you know that I had to get that one. This is another gift from my husband. Um, I would probably never pick out black yarn, but Kent loves the color black, and so it's kind of fun that he gave me something special. This is a cashmere silk and merino yarn, and the colorway is mystical. It's from Zen Garden. And another gift from my husband. This is very interesting. He, he even said when he gave it to me, I'm not sure you're gonna like the color, but it was so interesting, I had to get it. So this is called um, Dr. Jim's Irish Tea is the colorway, and I believe it is actually dyed with tea and this is a yarn shop called the village knittery in somerville south carolina so that is pretty special this one doesn't have a label anymore i think i've used part of the skein 
So anyway, pretty color though, right? And here is some Vesper sock yarn. This is a self-striping rainbow. Um, it is called Some Some Summertime. Some Some Summertime. That's pretty fun. I think this was also from my friend Rebecca Stash. So thank you so much, Rebecca. This is some custom Dallas Stars yarn that my friend Rain from Rain's Obsessive Stitchery dyed. This colorway is Victory Park and this one is the hanger and she I asked her when she was dying Nashville Predators colorway because she's in Nashville <laughs> the Nashville Predators colorway could she potentially make me a Dallas Stars colorway and she did so I kind of hold on to that yarn just to make it for special things I've done one pair of socks that's why this is a small skein um, but I'm kind of saving it to see what I want to do next all right last one I'm not going to do partial skeins because I do have a few like I keep skeins that are greater than 50 or 60 grams with my full skeins, but we're not gonna do those because I feel like this is gonna be long <laughs> already. But this is Night Owl Fibers. I love when dyers do a um, gobstopper ball. I know it's already so much work to dye the yarn self-striping and then they do the gobstopper ball. It's like, they're amazing. Um, but this is called Double Mint. I think that's really fun. Here's a tip if you store your yarn in open shelves like me. Put balls of yarn and partial skeins in the back and then put all of the full skeins in the front to make it look tidy. I like to organize my yarn by weight and then arrange it by color so it's more visually appealing. Switching up the view here a little bit so we can go through all of these odds and ends skeins. And now's a good time to tell you I am not including yarn that is in current projects as part of my stash because you can see I have this basket behind me where I have more yarn that's part of current and honestly some planned projects. So <laughs> this might not be a full and totally inclusive stash tour, but it is everything that is on my shelf right now. So this last little batch is things that are not fingering weight yarn. I mostly have fingering weight yarn. I think all my garment yarn, no, that's not true. There was some DK weight yarn and worsted in there, but these are some odds and ends. These are the ones that are harder for me to grab um, or like less natural. So I need to be intentional about creating projects to work through these yarns. So Let's see what we have. Okay, first off, this yarn is super, super cool. The same friend that got me the yarn in Greece also brought me yarn from Iceland, and I have no clue what to do with this. And when you have yarn that is this special, like, you don't wanna mess it up. So this is, first of all, in such a cool, like, little cake here, and it is lopy yarn, and it's very, very, I think, pretty fragile, like, I'm going to, have to be careful when I'm working with it, but I don't know what to make. What do you think I should make with this plotulopi? Plo, plo, I don't know how you would say it in the Icelandic language, if it is, yeah, made in Iceland. So what should I do with this? Because I've had it for years and I really want to make something special that I can use and remember the friend that gave this to me. More special yarn. I remember getting this in, I think, think maybe Colorado, we were on a road trip, and this yarn is hand spun, and I believe also hand dyed. Um, but anyway, it was just too cool, like that's something unique that I could not get anywhere else. It even says it was made by Allison, which is so cool, but I have no idea what to do with a skein that's 120 yards. Like, can I even make a hat out of that? I have no idea. Maybe that's what I should do, is try to make a hat, honestly, these two colors are so similar. If I could use them together, that would 
stretch them, but I have no idea what to make, so more ideas needed, please. These two skeins were a gift from my mother-in-law. I can't remember where they were when they got them. I think maybe Canada because I remember they were on a trip, but I have no idea what the brand is or anything, but 100% wool, looks like maybe worsted. I'm not sure if it's hand spun or not. Very possible that it is, but again, I just can't, I just love it when people give me yarn as a gift. I think that it's so thoughtful when you're not, a, definitely when you're not a knitter, and I wanna make something special with it. Okay, this I think I need to get rid of. It's hard for me, or it used to be a lot harder for me to get rid of leftovers, but this is a lace weight yarn. I made a project out of it, I finished it, and I have a ton left over, but you know what? I don't need this anymore, so I think it's time for that one to go. This is just some mohair from a homespun house. I did intend to make something with it, hold it together with something, but now I just have a nice skein, white skein of mohair ready to go, and I have um, more mohair. This is from Suburban Stitcher. This is curry. I love this color. And then I have a few more little things of mohair. And the thing about mohair is there's so much on the skein that you often don't use it even if you use up like your other yarn so it is kind of good to hold on to and keep around this is from la bienna may which is a um, yarn a french yarn hand dyed in paris it's also a yarn store that's why i was having a hard time but i did get these two to go together potentially so we shall see i have ideas but We'll have to wait and see if I can make that design happen. I have several skeins of lace weight yarn. This is um, Dream in Color Jilly Lace and the colorway is Pinky. And this is Malabrigo uh, Lace in Blue Surf. I used to work a lot more with la uh, lace weight yarn. I actually do love lace weight yarn, so I really should do something like a, a lacy shawl. Um, but yeah, I just kind of forget about these skeins. So it's good to go through your stash because then you can see what you have and remember some of the things that you love to do. Another skein of late suede, this one's nice and bright. This is the Barbed Dragon. And I think that there might be a Texas dyer because I feel like I remember getting this at a Texas yarn shop. And this colorway is called Shirley Temple. This really shouldn't be over there. Sugar and cream cotton. I use this yarn all the time. I love this yarn, but it's not really like a stash yarn. A little wicker thing was on there. So I'm gonna put this with my cotton stuff over here. This yarn is Plucky Knitter. Um, I have never actually purchased Plucky on my own. Plucky yarn is kind of like one of those things that's harder to get, like you have to go to their like special things. But somebody gifted this one to me. It's a one hit wonder, I have no idea, um, but I do like the color. This was another gift for my husband. I remember because he got it in New Orleans because he thought it looked like New Orleans colors. And I even wrote on the tag, New Orleans, October 2015, which would be like a couple months after we started dating. So from the beginning, my husband was a pretty awesome person and understood my love of yarn. This is Malabrigo Worsted in the colorway Pink Frost. I did a design with this yarn and I thought I needed two skeins and I didn't. So I used this and ooh, some mohair that I have somewhere together. So I might have to knit up another scarf just so this lone skein isn't sitting in my stash any longer. All right, all we have left now is alpaca. So I have a weird thing about I guess buying alpaca yarn because usually it's like a local farm and they put the name and the picture of the alpaca on the label and I cannot resist. It's a really good thing to buy when you are, or to me it's a really good thing to buy when you are on vacation because you might be in a different area and I always wanna get something special from that area. And if they don't have any local dyers, usually they do have a local farm. Uh, farmer. So that's what all of these yarns are. As you can tell, since I have quite a few, I don't ever knit them up. So I need to figure out what I can do with this alpaca yarn. This one is incredibly soft. Let's see where this one is from. Uh, or Alpacas humming harmoniously in the misty mountains surrounding Oregon's Willamette Valley. Wow. Oh my gosh, that's so cool. I don't know which alpaca this was. I feel like, oh, it's from Cutie, who's a baby. It's a baby alpaca. Oh no, 
you guys help <laughs> i've totally messed up this skein oh my gosh it even smells good okay here impromptu lesson all right so if you ever do this to your skeins they come unskeined um when you grab the ties make sure there's nothing crossing over so grab by the ties and then hold one hand still with the other one start to twist and see how i'm holding this like a loop start to twist and twist i don't really do mine that tight because like i don't have that much experience and then let it fold bring these two together when you put this through the loop i like to give this an extra twist and then the loop that you're holding on to put one through and then you kind of have to like knock this back out and then now we are rehanked all right let me try not to break apart any more skeins here let's see where this one is from everthanks farm i don't know where it is uh this one is a sport weight and this one is from deborah how cute okay this one is not alpaca this one is wool i remember going to the shop it was like crazy like crowd like not crowded with people but like the yarn was like floor to ceiling it was kind of overwhelming um but what was cool about this is the story um let me just read the label because i'm not going to explain it well this loosely plied fingering weight yarn is produced in cooperation with the portland community college vet tech program to which we donate all proceeds from sales of this yarn the wonderful texture and coloration is produced from the unique combination of sheep and will provide a great rustic quality to your projects. So I just thought that that was cool that it was like a collaboration with the local um, community college. And even though it's like kind of rough, um, it is a wooly wool for sure. I just thought that that was really neat. Maybe I need to use that with my other kind of rough wool and I can make something, something guys, I don't know. It, this is another alpaca one. I guess I should have known this was wool because it's not as soft as these. Alpaca. Oh my gosh. Okay, this is Willow Creek Fiber Mill. This is a, D, a DK weight yarn, and this is in Estes Park, Colorado. I remember um, we went there last summer and going to the shop. There's like a little attic place, and that's where I found this yarn. I don't even know why I got these. <laughs> from oh i don't know how to say this texans are going to be mad saguin texas segan texas oh no you guys i'm not a true texan um but these are from a farm in texas but i don't know what i'm going to do with these i don't think i'm probably ever going to be able to use these because they're alpaca and i'm not going to knit them into something else unless they are maybe usable with this maybe Maybe that's what I thought. Hmm. We're about to make a huge mess here in just a second, but I wanted to pop in and say that if you guessed 80 skeins of yarn in my stash, you are correct. So lastly, I have my treasure chest here behind me. Now I actually do have some other yarn in this glass container that's like even smaller scraps, but I'm not gonna dump that out because those are all just about five grams or less or two to three grams of scraps that I have been saving and trading with people for years for my Cozy Memories blanket. But this is something that I actually reach for much more often. So in here I have scraps that are between typically 50 to maybe 15, 15 to 50 grams. And I can use them in my Granny Stripe blanket, which I haven't worked on since we did make 30 for 30, like way back in January. but it is pretty good and i work on it i'll work on it nah, maybe christmas time who knows um, but i did want to go through here so i think the only way to do that is we're gonna have to dump it out and after i dump it out i am not gonna go through like every color i have no idea what these color names are but i will kind of pan around and show you what we have and what i do here sometimes as well is i'll go back into here if i need heels or toes for a pair of socks because 15 to 20 grams is like the perfect amount and then if i use up a lot of it i throw it into the smaller scraps jar so that's how i manage scraps and keep them contained and still try to use up as much yarn as possible i also have this giant scrappy ball going it's a magic yarn ball you can see that i have done magic knots 
I don't know if I'm ever going to use this, but it is a good theory. Maybe I can just keep making them and I can like give them to somebody that would like to do magic, like a magic knot blanket, who knows? Maybe I'll make a corner to corner blanket one day. I have no idea, but I am trying to use up my, all of my yarns as much as I can to the extent that is manageable for me. So let's dump this thing out. I think that's gonna be a lot of fun. I hope you all enjoyed this video and getting to see a peek into my stash. I'm even more excited to use this yarn now that I've gone through it and looked at everything again. Tell me about your yarn stash down in the comments. Do you keep a larger stash or a smaller stash or maybe no stash at all? What colors do you see in your stash the most? If you're inspired to go through your stash, make sure to take a picture and tag me on Instagram at Nitty Natty. I love to see what you're up to. Well, that's it for this video, and I will see you on Thursday with a new podcast.